Is there anything better than a quilt that looks really complicated to put together, but is actually pretty easy to put together? Hi, my name is Fallon and I love to quilt. If you are a quilter or want to learn how to quilt, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. This idea for this magic argyle quilt popped into my head a few nights ago when I was looking through some of my old quilt sketches. I had this idea a while ago for an argyle quilt. The only thing holding me back was that I do not love sewing blocks on point. I can do it, but I don't love it. It's something about those diagonal rows that kind of play with my mind a little bit, and I have to pay extra close attention when sewing a quilt that way. I figured out a way to make this quilt on point, but you don't have to sew it on point, so no diagonal rows. That's the magic part of this whole quilt, and it is a huge win-win for me. Here's what you need for the Magic Argyle quilt. You need 36 10-inch squares using a main fabric. You need 36 10-inch squares using a, a background fabric. And then you're going to need one and a quarter yards of accent fabric. Now, this fabric is going to be cut down into one inch by 19.5 inch strips. So for this quilt, I actually scoured Pinterest for color combinations. Sometimes I just get paralyzed trying to figure out what colors will look nice together, especially if I'm using solid fabrics. There's just something about solid fabrics that make it really hard for me to decide how they might go together well. And I found the perfect graphic for making this quilt if you plan to use solid colors as well. There is a graphic here that shows a bunch of different three color combinations that look good together. And it was actually perfect for this quilt since I'm only using three colors on it. So here's the graphic that I found on Pinterest and hopefully it will help inspire you if you decide to make this quilt as well. You can definitely use some layer cakes for your 10 inch squares. You can get a nice variety of colors and prints for that. I am going to use some yardage that I cut down into 10 inch squares. So I have my yardage here. This yardage is classified as my background fabric. And then I of course have my main fabric for 10 inch squares as well. One benefit I think for using yardage like this is that you can starch it at first. So any shrinkage that will happen is going to happen when I starch it and then I press the fabric really flat to get it nice and even for cutting. So the first thing I'm going to do here for cutting this yardage down is I'm going to square up one end of it. So I'm just going to find some lines on my mat and trim it to get a nice straight even line. Now I have this folded into two layers of fabric and the seam is down here straight along a line as well. So now I'm just going to cut this into some 10 inch strips. I'm going to use a ruler here to give myself a little extra numbers to, <laughs> to, to make sure that I'm cutting the right width for my strips. I'm using the lines on my mat to mainly cut this, but this just gives me a little bit of extra security. So I'm cutting my 10 inch strip and then I'm gonna cut this 10 inch strip down into my 10 inch squares. But first I'm gonna cut all my strips from the fabric. All right, so I have all my strips cut and now I'm going to go ahead and cut them down into 10 inch squares. So I line the strips up on lines on my mat and now I'm just gonna cut off the salvage and then I'm going to cut my 10 inch squares measuring over 10 inches and going to cut. I'm going to measure over 10 more inches. So I'm lining up the 20 line over here and then I'm going to cut. You won't be able to see it. I don't think I'll be off camera, but I'm getting my second cut. All right, so just like that, I have my 36 10 inch background squares and I have my 36 10 inch main fabric squares. So I'm gonna start getting these ready for sewing. You will want to press and cut your accent fabric as well. Now, just a note here, if you do not like working with thin strips of fabric or small pieces of fabric, don't worry. Keep watching the video because I will give you some tips later so that you can skip the step with the strips. 
can just make some four patches and then we'll magically put this all together. Just keep watching. If you like the look of this quilt, I will give you some other ideas. All right, so we're going to cut this fabric into one inch strips. So I'm going to, again, trim off one side to get it nice and even. And then I'm just going to use the mat to cut my one inch strips. And then I will sub cut these down to the sizes I need. Again, all of those measurements are going to be in the description of the video to help you out later with putting this quilt together. So now we're going to take these squares and sew them together into four patches. Yes, four patches. Just trust the process here with me. It's going to magically come together and you will be amazed. So I like to do this step by taking two of the squares, put them right sides together. You're gonna have a main fabric and a background fabric together and just sew a quarter inch seam along here. All right, so after getting that first one sewn, we're gonna place the next two right sides together, a main and a background fabric. So you may have grabbed a layer cake and have one of these a print fabric, but still put them right sides together and just start sewing your next one. So we're just going to chain piece these together. It'll make quick work of this step getting them all sewn together. Okay, so keep sewing them just like that. Chain piece all 36 of these together. All right, so now you wanna cut all of these two patches apart. All right, so once we have all the two patches sewn together, I'm just gonna press the seam to the darker fabric. So I'm gonna press over to this dark blue. So I'm gonna get all the two patches pressed, and then what we're going to do is bring two of them together to make a four patch. So I'm just gonna lay them right sides together. Since our seams are pressed nicely, they should nest together beautifully to line up and get a nice point. So you see how they meet together there. You can feel it with your finger and feel that they come together really well. Then if you wanna make sure they get pressed really nicely, you can pop some pins in here to keep it nice and even. All right, so take this over to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam across there. I like to press the seam open at this point just so everything comes together really nicely in the end. If you wanna press it to one side or the other, you can go ahead and do that. So sew that quarter inch seam and then press it. All right, so look at that perfect point there. Beautiful. So get all your four patches prepped and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to cut five inches in from the edge of one side of the four patch. So we're gonna measure five inches and slice. So what we're going to be doing is taking our one inch by 19.5 inch accent strip and we're going to be sewing it right in that spot that we sliced. So I'm gonna lay this right sides together on the small strip here, sew a quarter inch seam, press the seam open, and then I'm going to sew on the next side. All right, so there we have one strip in. It looks so good. So now we're gonna to turn to the other side and we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're gonna measure five inches over and cut. Always double check. Make sure you're lined up good. 
it's so easy to cut the wrong cut. So one, two, three, four, five, make sure you're good. Slice. And then we're going to sew that one inch strip, one in one inch by 19.5 inch strip right in there, just like we did before. All right, so now we have both strips sewn in place and we're just going to turn the block and do the same thing on this side. So we're gonna measure five inches over, cut a slit. Sew a strip in place. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Look how cute this block turns out. So you're going to want to make 18 of these four patches with the strips sewn in. Now this amazing four patch should measure about 19 and a half by 19 and a half inches. If yours isn't even, just trim all of them up so that they are even so everything will come together. I am not one who fusses with sashings meeting and everything coming together perfect. I think all of it will just wash out after some good quilting and a good wash. If you do want all of that to meet up perfectly, if that is something that matters to you, my friend Chris from Sew the Distance is so good at explaining how to pin and get all those things to meet together really well. She explained this so well in her Christmas present video, so I will link that in the description below if you want some tips for that. So let's get all 18 of these four patches sewn up with the strips in, and then we're going to talk layout for all these blocks. After getting all of the blocks completed, we're going to sew all of the four patches together. So there are going to be six rows and there are going to be three four patches in each row. And this is going to make a really big, awkward, rectangular quilt. I tried to get all of the layout on camera, but it was honestly so large, it didn't even fit on my design board. So I'm going to kind of show you some of it. But just keep in mind that it's going to be this huge checkerboard layout. So my top is all together. It looks great, but this definitely isn't the final layout. We're not gonna have this really large rectangular quilt. So press everything really well as you work and just really trust the process. We're almost there, I promise you. Okay, so I saw this method on the Missouri Star Quilt Company's YouTube channel. And I just thought it was amazing that this was a really fun way to put a quilt on point. So I'm going to link in the description of this video to Jenny doing this pattern with charm packs and also with a layer cake. Now, they're, they weren't making a Argyle quilt, they were just making a charm pack quilt 
and putting it on point and then with the layer cake quilt it's kind of a little different of a design but it is really fun definitely check out those videos if you haven't watched them like i said i'll link both in the description below but now we are going to cut this quilt twice so trust the process make sure that you get the cut in the right position before you make the cut because you don't want to miss miss cut this there's no way that i can think of to fix it easily so by doing that i'm going to actually mark the quilt first so i can double check make sure i'm cutting in the right spot so while the rectangular quilt is laid out with the short end up above of you you're going to cut along the diagonal and it will cut midway through the length of the quilt but like I said, I'm going to mark it first so I can look at it, make sure it's good before I move forward. So let me find something to mark with. Should have planned a little better. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab my longest ruler and I'm gonna lay it so these are coming right across the points here on the block. So, That'll help me keep everything relatively straight. And this is a large quilt. It's very awkward. You can also do this entire layout with a charm pack quilt and make a smaller quilt uh, if you want. Make sure I'm going through the, the intersections of the 10 inch blocks. Okay, we're almost there. And doing this will also give me a good line to follow when I cut it as well. We're almost there. And we're gonna do this twice. I didn't meet all the way up. I thought I did, but I didn't. This quilt is so long. <laughs> One thing that helps with this checkerboard design is that you go through the same color squares each time. So you kind of know with that that you're doing this right. So this should be the sixth block down. The final block on the side that I marked through should be the sixth block. So let's make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we got it, yay. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to cut this. Since I have this line to follow, I can know for sure that it is the right path. So I'm not saying this is gonna be easy to cut, but if you did the charm pack version, it'll be a little easier. But sometimes we want a nice big quilt. All right, so I'm gonna cut, kind of following that line that I drew, making sure I'm going through all these intersections. Keep it lined up. The slide lock really helps because when I push down, it locks it in place and I don't have to worry about it moving around on here after I get it lined up. I'm not gonna lie. Every time you make that cut, it's going to be a little bit scary because you pieced all this together and then hacking it up is just, a, I mean, it honestly is, it's a tad scary, but it's gonna be worth it. Okay. Cutting this is quicker than marking it. Maybe it's because I'm not paranoid as much with it being in the wrong place, right? Like I already have that reassurance of the line there, but okay, almost there. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be pulling it that way, but okay. Whew. First cut done, a little scary but we got it, so we're going to use this. This isn't trash, we're going to use it. All these pieces are going to be used. It's not like we sewed this and aren't using any of it, right? Okay, so now we gotta kinda do this in the opposite direction. So we're going to go from the bottom corner over to where we cut before, right? So we're kind of making a big, triangle and two smaller triangles if that helps you envision it and this time we're going through the darker blue squares oh now i know my floor's dusty <laughs> this is dragging across the floor 
because uh, it's so big. So I'm going to have to, now that's a reminder to clean my floors. Okay, focus. All right, so we're going in that other direction. And we're meeting six blocks up on the same side that we cut to before. So going through these diagonals on the darker blue. Okay, going right through the, the middle of the 10 inch size squares. Okay, and see, hopefully you can see this is that cut we did before and we're meeting right there at it. Okay, so now we can cut again. And I'm gonna turn this a little more so that it's gonna be easier for me to cut along that line. Make sure that I'm not cutting over other layers of fabric. So we met six blocks up again. You all are gonna love this, how it comes together. It'll make you think of different ways that you could do a quilt on point using this method. Absolutely loved it. And I'm going to show you later at the end of the video a little um, charm pack version that I made. Smaller than even the Missouri Star one, but I wanted to show that as well because it's so cute using those little blocks. Almost there. And like I said, if you don't think you have enough space to do this large version of the quilt, because this is a really big <laughs> rectangle, um, think about the charm pack version. It's really cute as well. Okay, so this is another of that's the smaller triangle. But here you'll be able to see how the on point comes together. So awesome. I just love it. Okay, so I'm going to put that to the side. And then these two we need to bring together so that it will come together with that other piece and make a big square quilt. And to do that, we just need to lay the side that has these full squares together. And then we'll sew that seam. And then we'll bring it together with that other piece. So we have this together. I'm going to put it right sides together. Then you're going to want to pin really well. So I'm going to pin all these intersections that I need to come together really well. I am honestly typically not a pin gal. I don't pin a lot, but for this quilt, since it's all solids, I'm going to pin it really well for me because I know the patterns of prints and things like that aren't going to really hide, help hide all of this if it doesn't come together really nicely. If I used a print with this, like I did with my charm version, I probably, you know, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't worry about it as much. All right, so I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew across that seam. All right, I have that seam sewn and now I'm going to press it really well. All right, so now you can see the on point version here too, with it all pressed and sewn together. So now we need to bring these two large triangles together to make this beautiful quilt. So I'm gonna lay this out. This is a big table too, and it doesn't wanna fit. All right, so we're gonna lay these out together, find the end. I put a weight on here to hold it in place for me. Okay, and then I'm just gonna pin like I did before. All right, so we're gonna pin all the way across here. Since I pressed the seams to the dark side as much as I could with the uh, 10 inch squares, a lot of these seams nest together really nicely. And then all these little sashing strips, since I press them open, I can find where they meet really well 
also, and there's not a ton of bulk anywhere in this, which is very, very helpful for pressing. It's going to be very helpful as I quilt this because I am going to quilt it on my Juki 2010Q, just a kind of domestic sewing machine. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge with this large of a quilt, but I'm going to make it happen. And I will show you some of that as well so that you can see how I plan to quilt this quilt myself. So my ruler here is pretty heavy. It helps not drag the quilt off as I'm pinning this. I'm just gonna go ahead and get it all pinned up and sew that seam and press it. And then I'll show you how it looks after that. Then I'm gonna show you how I table base my quilt. So I'm gonna uh, base this quilt together for you so you can see that. And then again, I'll show some of the quilting that I do on this, get it all finished up. And I also have those little charm pack quilt that I'm going to show you as well. So a few tips for you as well. I mentioned that there are some ways that you can bring this idea together without having to use these small sashing strips. Now Misty from Missouri Star Quilt Company has a video making an argyle quilt as well. Her quilt uses diamonds and isn't constructed in the same way, but she did use some rickrack in place of the strips. So you could make this quilt, lay it out with just the 10 inch squares, don't put the slits in it, bring it together on point like I showed, and then mark up the quilt like Misty shows and, and get yourself an argyle quilt without using the small strips. Now, another method I saw is from So Very Easy. She brought her quilt together on point and then used bias binding tape to get the strips on her quilt as well. So she marked out the lines on the top of the quilt and sewed them in place. So I'll link to both Misty's video and So Very Easy's video so that you can see if maybe you prefer their method for bringing it together or if you want to make the quilt top assemble it like I did, but then add rickrack or the bias binding to your quilt instead of the small strips. So just a few other options for you so you could get this look just in a different way. Oh, we got a ways to go pinning this still. We can do it though. We can do it. So this quilt is, I think, very easy to bring together. It's easy sewing. There's not a lot of intricate pieces. But sometimes easy doesn't mean that it's a quick sew. Sometimes things take a little bit longer, especially if you are careful and want to pin all of these intersections so that everything comes together really nicely. So sometimes quilts just take work. Sometimes you don't always have a fast, fast, fast quilt pattern to put together. All right, so I got the quilt all pinned, so I'm gonna head over to the sewing machine, sew across this seam, press it, and then we'll take a look at the final quilt top layout, and then we'll move on to the finishing steps for this quilt. All right, so here is the quilt top all finished. It is a huge quilt. I'm so excited to get this finished. I already picked out my backing fabric and binding fabric, so let me show you what I'm gonna use. So here is the backing fabric that I chose and it's a 108 inch fabric and I'm so thankful I found something that I really like for the back because that would be a lot to piece together for this really large quilt. So here is a closer look at it if you wanted to see it up close. I think it's going to be a lot of fun on this quilt. It's a lot of design for the back since the front of the quilt just has solid fabrics. And now here is the binding I chose. It is a gray, but it has a lot of texture in it. I thought it would be fun for the front of the quilt to have the little bit of extra texture. And since it's gray, it'll blend in nicely with the front. But since the back of the quilt does have all that pattern on it, I thought it would go well with that as well and not clash with either side of the quilt. So here is the binding fabric close up so you can see that as well. All right, so when I base quilts, I use the table basting method. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of that as well, and then move on to quilting and binding the quilt. Okay, so before I base this quilt, 
I want to show you the smaller version because I don't want to forget and never show it. So here it is. It is absolutely adorable with the printed fabric. Turns out so cute. So how I did this one is essentially the same way here, just on a smaller version. Now this little charm pack square comes out to about 23 inches. It is really little, but that is because I used a lot less four patches. There are only four rows of four patches, and in that row there are only two four patches. So a lot less sewing but it'll make a really cute oversized pillow, or if you put some borders on, it would be a cute little table topper or even a nice little play mat for a baby. Now, if you wanted to, you could use the charm squares and use the same amount as in this quilt and make a little bit of a larger charm pack quilt as well. One other thing I wanna note with the charm pack version is I did make the strips a little less wide. So they're three quarters of an inch. I think you could still do the inch strips if you wanted to, but I thought they would look a lot better on that charm pack version, a little more petite. All right, so let's jump into the basting of the quilt. This time for sure. All right, so it is really hard to get this full six foot table in frame and in this type of space so that you can see me table base this. What I did first was I laid out the backing fabric with the pretty side facing down toward the table and then I put these bandy clamps around the outside. And what I do is I smooth the backing fabric as I work. So I'm smoothing it and putting these clamps around as I work. So all the way around the table. Now the next piece I base with is the batting. And so I have the batting folded into fourths and I'm going to lay it down across the middle of the table. And because this is a folding table, I can kind of find the middle by feeling where that fold is. So I'll lay it there and then kind of unravel it across the table. Now, if, it can seem like this is a lot of steps, right? Like it's not really an easy process, especially if you have a really large quilt. And that's why I wanted to show it with a really large quilt because, you know, it can look relatively easy when you're doing a small quilt and you don't really see how, how challenging it can be with something larger. So I just smooth the batting out and remove each clamp so that it's holding the batting and the backing fabric. This batting is off of a big roll that I purchased, so it doesn't really have as many folds as some does when I get it from the store in a package. Okay, I just have two on that side. All right, so one thing I didn't mention is that I am going to pin base this quilt. Now, if you were going to spray baste, you would have needed to spray baste the wrong side of the backing fabric and then lay the batting on top of it, smoothing it out as you go. And then you would put some spray based on now and then put the top of the quilt on. I'm going to pin base this so I don't have anything to do between each layer. Now, just like with the batting, I have the backing fabric folded into fourths and I'm gonna find kind of what I feel like is the center of the table and I can feel for that fold in the table to kind of help me line that up and then kind of unroll the quilt. So that kind of gives you an idea of how large this quilt is. This is a six foot table and it hangs off the edge just a little bit on each side. So I'll get the final measurements of the quilt after I put the binding on and everything, but it's going to be a good I would imagine 80 inches at least. Maybe just under, but I'll get the final measurements for you then. All right, and so again, 
I'm going to smooth out the top across here as I adjust each of the clamps. So I'll take a clamp off, smooth. All right, so I have my curved safety pins here, and this is why I have come to really like pin basting quilts. I can really smooth out the quilt really well if I start from the center pinning and come out. I can move the fabric with my hands up and make sure it's really nice and even. I might be a little bit lazy and just bring the quilt to me all the way here on the couch. Um, so I just start in what I feel like is the center of the quilt and just start putting these safety pins in. And then I will smooth out and you can see hopefully that it bubbles up a little bit there. So I know I didn't get it nice and even with my first initial um, smoothing and clamping of everything. So I can adjust that as I work. It can be tedious, but quilting is tedious. I don't know where the the idea comes in that we have to do everything fast. And I get it, sometimes I wanna finish a quilt fast too, but sometimes a lot of these steps that take a little more time are so important. And I feel like pinning for me helps me get the quilt a lot, a lot nicer finish because I can smooth everything and I don't get as many of those little ripples that I used to get when I spray basted my quilt. Also, I forgot to grab this time, but usually I bring some little snips over here so I can pull out or um, so I can cut out these little threads from the fabric that stick out at the seams. I can go ahead and take care of that now too. Now, because you can see not all of the quilt is on top of the table right now. So what happens is after I get all of this pinned on the top here, I will unclamp the clamps and pull the quilt to the side and I can start doing, say the side of the quilt over there will be on top. I'll clamp everything back down, smooth it out really well, get that pinned and then I'll pull the quilt to the other side and get this final side that's by me all pinned. So it's, it's a process, but I feel like any way you baste a quilt is, is a process. I don't think there's one way that's easier than another. I know some people like to wall baste a quilt. They'll put it up on their design wall and baste it. And some people will baste their quilts on the floor. Some people have a friend who has a long arm that will baste it for them. There's a lot of different ways you can baste the quilt. I know for me, what I used to do before I found this method was I would base mine on the floor. And the reason that was hard for me is one, I, I don't really clean my floors enough to, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but the big problem for me with that was uh, one, we have a dog and if I don't get it done fast enough, he will want to come walk on it. And then two, it was really hard on my knees crawling around and doing that. So this is a method that works really well for me and it's easier on my knees. I don't have to crawl around on the floor. So this is what we go with. All right, so I'm gonna get this all pinned up and then we will meet at the sewing machine and I'll show you how I'm gonna quilt it. All right, so when I quilt a quilt on my sewing machine, I always use some grip gloves. These are Gorilla Grip gloves from Home Depot. I will link them in the products, but they are so helpful when feeding a quilt through a sewing machine. Uh, it helps me keep a firm grip on the fabric. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm sewing across all the sashing, so I'm gonna sew down the sashing and then I'm gonna sew next to the sashing on each side. So a lot of stitching on this quilt, but I really think it'll help accent the whole argyle pattern. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sew right down the middle of the sashing strip. It really works out well because it's about as wide as my walking foot. So it makes that really easy. 
I'm going to start off of the quilt top. I'm going to start over on the batting just so I don't have to sink any stitches for this quilt. And I'm also starting down the center of the quilt and then I work out just in case I didn't smooth out the quilt really well. I can smooth out as I go. You can see I pull the quilt all up on me so I don't have a lot of weight dragging the quilt down. When I get up to any pins, I just pull them out. So for the binding, I have a yard of fabric here. I have it folded in half and I have the fold along one of the lines of my mat. I'm going to square up one side so I can get a nice straight line. And for my binding, I like to cut two and a half inch strips. That's the size binding I really like. So that's pretty much what I always use. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and cut off the selvage now. It'll just make it easier for me in the end. So I don't have to cut it off of each strip. So I'm just gonna use the lines on my mat to cut the two and a half inches. If you wanna use a ruler, you can do that as well. Double check. And I'm just gonna cut all of these strips. All right, so now I'm gonna sew all of the strips together along the short end, bringing them all together in one humongous long strip of fabric. So I just fold the strip on top up and then keep sewing. If you don't wanna cut all the strips apart once you get the next strip ready to get sewn on, you can just Cut your threads and then sew the next one. That way you don't have to go back and cut them all apart. After sewing all of these strips together, it's time to start pressing the binding strips in half. So you'll wanna press wrong sides together, just fold it over and press really well. And just as a note where any of the seams are that I sewed, I press them open just to reduce bulk. And then sort of as I press this, I roll it up just because this can, this will probably be a big, huge roll of binding. Any leftovers, I just keep to bind up some smaller projects or I will keep pieces so that I can sew them to end to end together and make a scrappy binding for a scrap quilt I might make in the future. No piece of fabric left behind. <laughs> all right, after pressing all the binding strips, it's time to start sewing it onto the quilt. I sew my binding to the back of the quilt and you'll line up the raw edges of the binding with the raw edges of the quilt. Now you're going to want to leave a long tail of binding from where you start sewing. That way you can bring the binding together later when you get all the way around the quilt. So I'm going to raise the presser foot and I just sew right along the edge of the binding. So you're going to start sewing back stitch because you want it nice and secure there for when you bring the binding ends together later. Just like with quilting a quilt, I like to put a grip glove on. It helps me hold the quilt nice and securely as I'm attaching the binding. 
I also tend to use my stiletto here. I usually hold down the binding and the quilt. It's a lot of layers. So using this to keep everything secure so the binding doesn't stretch out is really helpful in my opinion. I've noticed a difference. I keep as much of the quilt as I can up on the table so it doesn't drag. You will definitely feel the resistance if you let your quilt drag on one side or the other. So if you feel that drag, definitely adjust your quilt. So once you get to a corner, sew until you're about a quarter of an inch away, leave your needle down. So see how the needle's still in the down position? Raise your presser foot and turn your quilt so that the corner of the quilt is pointed toward you. And then sew to the end. I backstitch here. You don't really need to, but I just do so that the stitches are secure. Now rotate your quilt so that the side you just sewed is away from you. Take the binding and pull it up away from you as well. I finger press the binding and then fold the binding down toward you. Now, if you need to, if you're new to doing this, you may wanna put a clip in or a pin to hold it in place, but I've gotten to where this is kind of just second nature, so I'm gonna put it under and start sewing. Now, I backstitch here again. I Again, I don't think you really need to, but it's something that has become habit for me. I just don't want any of it to come undone because this is a lot of work. And then I'm just gonna sew the binding on to the entire back of the quilt doing this same thing. When I get to each corner, I'm gonna follow those same steps until I get around to where I started sewing the binding on. When I get there, I'm gonna stop about a foot to a foot and a half away from where I started sewing the binding on before so I can bring the ends of the binding together. So I keep this part very, very simple. I am joining the binding together and I'm centering the area that I left unsewn on a line on my mat. So I have the edge of the quilt lined up with the line on my mat and then this line here is going to be an estimate of about the center of this open space. Then I'm going to lay one of the binding strips right along the edge of the quilt and I'm going to mark right where the center is. The estimate of the center. Then I'm just going to cut along that line I marked. And I'm not using a ruler or anything because it's such a small cut. I don't I don't fuss with that. So I'm going to lay that binding strip back on there. You don't really have to because I have these half inch lines here. I'm gonna lay, I wanna make sure it's nice and straight and even though. Then I'm gonna lay the other end across there and mark a half an inch overlap. So see how there's a half an inch more, there's a half an inch past that first cut I made. And then I'm just gonna cut off there. So I'm just gonna lay it along one of the lines and cut it off. So I just keep it really simple. There's a lot of ways you can do this. There's a lot of ways to make sure it's absolutely nice and perfect. I just keep it really simple. So there is that. So now we need to sew those ends together. So I'm just gonna bring them together, right sides together, and sew them 
with a quarter inch seam. If you left enough room between the ends of the binding strips, this shouldn't be too hard, but if you brought them together too close, it can be difficult to maneuver it under the, the sewing machine. All right, and then if you want, you can take this over to the iron and press it. I'm just going to finger press it open, hold it down, and then we just need to sew it together. Now, if you want, you can lay this and make sure it seems like it's laying nice and flat. If, um, if it looks like you got it too tight or anything like that, now's the time to try and fix that. Or if it seems too loose, then you can try and fix that as well. Looks good for me, so I'm just gonna sew the rest of this in place. I'm gonna grab my glove and my stiletto to keep this nice and even. I'm gonna back stitch a little, but not a lot, because we're overlapping stitches anyway, so it should be fine. So once I have the binding sewn completely to the back of the quilt, I am going to set up my machine for sewing the binding to the front. So the first thing I like to do is change out the presser foot. I have a scant quarter inch presser foot on my machine for piecing and things like that. So I'm going to remove that and then I'm going to put on this presser foot that's like a about an eighth of an inch. I think it is technically for zippers, but I like using this for putting the binding on so I can use it to sew right against the edge of the binding. So I'm gonna put that on my machine. And then I'm going to increase the stitch length to just under three. That's where I had it when I was sewing on um, the, when I was sewing the quilting. So I like to put it there just to kind of match the look of the quilting. Uh, that's all going to be preference. Your stitch length for quilting is going to be preference. I would recommend using some scraps and just quilting on them to see which stitch length you prefer on your machine. So my glove's going to go back on. And then I'm just going to start sewing the binding on. I've tried so many different methods for sewing binding to the front of a quilt. I like to just work along as I sew the binding on. I have some videos where I sew using the iron pressing it to the front, using glue, using binding tape. Um, there's a lot of things you can do just using clips to hold it in place, but I find that I still get a really nice binding you doing it this way. It's just going to be where your comfort level is. So I'm going to just start sewing along the edge. Like I said, this presser foot I'm using is about an eighth of an inch wide. So I just try to keep it right along the edge of the binding and sew it in place. And I just try to work relatively slow to keep it even. This is definitely not how slow I usually sew when I'm piecing a quilt or even when I'm quilting a quilt. This step, I have to go a little slower to get a nice even stitch on the binding. So as we finish up this complete walkthrough of making this Argyle quilt pattern, I would love for you to let me know in the comments if, if this is a quilt pattern that you would like to make at some point in the future. And something else I would also like to know is if you enjoy this type of a quilting tutorial. Do you like that I walked through all the steps from start to finish of making this quilt or do you like just seeing the quilt top get made? That will definitely help me in the future for making tutorials for quilts. All right, so we're getting up to the corner of the quilt and I just take my stiletto and kind of run it across the binding till I get to the edge. And when my stiletto's in that crease, I fold up the other end of the binding and just see if I get a nice point there. 
if I'm getting a nice point, then I know I have it lined up really well. So I use my stiletto to hold that in place and I slowly set, sew down to that corner, keeping an eye that nothing has shifted. Having the stiletto there really helps because I've tried holding it with my finger and I get really nervous that I'm gonna sew myself. <laughs> and you don't want that. So once I get right over onto the binding that is going in this direction, I raise my presser foot, keep the needle down, and I rotate the quilt and start sewing in the next direction on the next side of the quilt. This binding is looking really good on this quilt. Oh, it was such a good choice. I love when it all comes together. All right, so now I'm sewing in the next direction and this quilt is coming together beautifully. I'm so excited to see it completely finished. All right, so I'm just gonna keep on chugging away, sewing the binding to the front of the quilt and get that finished up. Here's the Argyle quilt completely finished. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I love the quilting on it. I think it really highlights the Argyle pattern and the binding worked really well with the front and the back of the quilt as well. And this pop of color is just amazing. I absolutely love everything about this quilt. I really hope that you enjoyed the full walkthrough of seeing this quilt come together from start to finish. Let me know if you enjoy this type of video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.